25 years ago, I made a film called Palestine is Still the Issue. It was about a nation of people, the Palestinians, forced off their land and later subjected to a military occupation by Israel, an occupation condemned by the United Nations and almost every country in the world, including Britain. But Israel is backed by a very powerful friend, the United States. So in 25 years, if we're to speak of the great injustice here, nothing has changed. What has changed is that the Palestinians have fought back. Stateless and humiliated for so long, they've risen up against Israel's huge military machine, although they themselves have no army, no tanks, no American planes and gunships or missiles. Some have committed desperate acts of terror, like suicide bombing. But for Palestinians, the overriding routine terror, day after day, has been the ruthless control of almost every aspect of their lives, as if they live in an open prison. This film is about the Palestinians and a group of courageous Israelis united in the oldest human struggle to be free. The justification for taking somebody else's land is biblical. That God gave them Palestine, and God, not the history of others, is their witness. I'm here because it's obvious, that's my place. It's not something it's in my hands that we can, you know, we can give it back. Not me, not any politician uh, or, or, or any, anybody, or uh, par parliament or whatever. Because it's, it's a movement. It's something that comes 3,000 years ago, when Moses brought us here, and we have in our mind, we have the dream of building a temple in Jerusalem. It's something a lot bigger than religion. Where, where will it end, though? If there's no compromise, doesn't that mean conflict? Where? Life is full with conflicts. I don't know what to say. I know. Maybe I'm saying something too strong. It's one zero game. We will fight. The conflict is here. We will fight. It's one zero game. Not to kill each other, but it's us or them. The United States, Mr. Prime Minister, has been proud of its association with the state of Israel. Rest assured that the security of Israel is a principal objective of this administration. I want everybody to know, should I be the president, Israel's going to be our friend. I'm going to stand by Israel. Israel's occupation of Palestine would not be possible without the backing of America. In the oil-rich Middle East, Israel is America's deputy sheriff receiving billions of dollars along with the latest weapons F-16 aircraft, bombs, missiles, Apache helicopters. Today Israel is the fourth largest military power in the world and it has nuclear weapons. This is bomb damage in Gaza. Although America is Israel's main arms supplier it's not widely recognized that Britain also fuels the conflict here, even though it condemns Israel for its illegal occupation. During the first 14 months of the Palestinian uprising, the Blair government approved 230 export licenses for weapons and military equipment to Israel. The categories these covered included large caliber weapons, ammunition, bombs, and vital parts for military aircraft that almost certainly included American-supplied combat helicopters. You may have seen these Apache gunships on the news, firing missiles at densely populated areas. Tony Blair has said, and I quote him, we are doing everything we can to bring peace and stability to the Middle East. In the news we get, only the Palestinians are described as terrorists. And yet the Israelis have a long history of terrorism, both before and since the founding of the Jewish state. At least three Israeli prime ministers have been involved in campaigns of terror. 
The tragic scene is like a serious incident during the Blitz. The hotel housed the British Army headquarters and the Palestine government offices, and casualties were very heavy. The commander of the terrorist group that blew up the King David Hotel in Jerusalem in 1946 was Manayak and Begin. 91 people were killed. Manayak and Begin was Israeli Prime Minister in the 70s and 80s. He once described a massacre as a splendid act of conquest. Yitzhak Shamir was Prime Minister until 1992. He had been a leader of a Jewish group called the Stern Gang which carried out a string of assassinations. It is not surprising that the Jewish people of Israel should feel insecure. No one should ever forget that the most devastating genocide in human history happened only two generations ago. But a true sensitivity to that awful memory comes from the same basic humanity that recognizes the suffering of the Palestinian people and the courage of their endurance. The truth is that Israelis will never have peace until they recognize that Palestinians have the same right to the same peace and the same independence that they enjoy. Recently, that great voice of freedom, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, asked this. Have the Jewish people of Israel forgotten their collective punishment, their home demolitions, their humiliations so soon Israel's own dissenting voices have not forgotten, and those who speak out in this film honor the best traditions of Jewish humanity. If Rami, the man who lost a young daughter in a suicide attack, can understand the root cause of the violence here, isn't it time that others broke their silence? The occupation of Palestine should end now. Then the solution is clear. Two countries, Israel and Palestine, neither dominating nor menacing the other. Is that impossible? Or is history to witness the consequences of yet another silence?